Greetings, users! By the way I look, you can probably guess that today I'm looking at arguably the quintessential video game film, Tron from 1982. To my shame, I'd pretty much completely missed out on Tron up until this point, my only exposure being a trailer on the Cool Runnings VHS and the Tron level from Kingdom Hearts 2, which both kind of failed to inspire me to search it out. Eventually I have, however, and I'm surprised at how well the film has held up visually. The light blue and red on black is, at this point, iconic in its own right, and probably what everyone thinks of when imagining entering a computerised world. This particular art style seems to take a lot of inspiration from 70s video games, especially Atari's Battlezone, but also setting it apart from its inspirations. The story revolves around computer systems of the Encom Corporation. The CEO, Mr Dillinger, has adapted an old chess program into a seemingly omnipotent AI called the Master Control Program, which absorbs the processes of other computer programs it deems useful and sends those it doesn't to gladiatorial video games, all the time starting to reach its sphere of influence outside the company and into other companies and even government systems. As a little aside, this detail is particularly interesting, because as I said, the film came out in 1982, and that happens to be the same year the TCP IP protocol became standardised, which opened up computer networks to being truly global. So the MCP's mentions of Kremlin files or needing a Chinese translation file were pretty spot on with advances occurring at the time. In parallel to the story, we mostly followed Jeff Bridges as Kevin Flynn, a brilliant programmer turned hacker who's had his ideas and work stolen and plagiarised by Dillinger, and whose actions are countered by Dillinger's master control program at every turn. Flynn, with the help of a couple of other NCOM employees, gets into the building to help with this endeavour, but the MCP uses experimental hardware to digitise Flynn and transport him into the computer world. From here, it's up to Flynn to team up with captured programs in the computer, including a security program called Tron, to try and deactivate the MCP and get Flynn back to the real world. Despite most of my outline of the setup being based mostly in the real world of the film, there's very little that actually takes place there. For example, we're not even two minutes in after the titles before we zoom into an arcade machine and get the first of the famous light cycle scenes, as well as a succinct exposition dump about the state of the computer world, introducing the audience to the idea of computer programs thinking and feeling. This eagerness to get to the computer world buys some goodwill from the viewer who will have come to the film expecting this kind of thing, and so will be placated whilst the real world is set up after this scene, much like a drink while perusing a menu. Another thing I love in general with the film is the transitions between the real and computer worlds. There's a lot of times when they fade from one to the other in such a way that you at first have to remind yourself that the transition has actually happened. This gives a sense of how the two have such similarities and are interdependent on one another. A neat little detail is also that the programs in the computer world are played by the same actor as the person who's created them in the real world. I dare say this decision was made as much to save money on casting as it was a deliberate choice to emphasise that a programmer puts a piece of their soul into their creation. But when Flynn gets digitised, it is quite cute to see his reaction when he recognises people by their real-world counterparts. One thing that can be pretty awkwardly done from time to time is the handling of the B story regarding programmes worshipping the real-world users as gods. Part of the Master Control program's regime in the computer world is that he demands they renounce this faith or face deletion in the games. His enforcer lieutenant, General Sark, is complicit in all this and appears to relish this job. However, when asked to do the same to Flynn, he hesitates. It doesn't really make sense to me as we don't see that Sark has any faith to be conflicted about this potential deicide. Some of the less well-written lines of this storyline also feel like it's trying to force the plotline even more. One thing I would say about this beast story is that it's so rare for a religion allegory like this to A. be openly polytheistic and B. encourage questioning one's gods. It's not in your face about either of those points or anything, but I just felt it was rare enough to be worth noting. As good as I think the art style of the computer world is generally, the technology used to create it is, of course, very old now, and I recognise that a lot of people will be turned off by how everything looks. On the one hand, I think the apparent primitiveness on the CG helps to distinguish it from the real world, but in my opinion, the blue tint over everything, as well as the jumpsuits the actors are wearing, can sometimes make it pretty hard to tell the characters apart. There are nitpicks I keep making, like how a love story is shoehorned in, but given about as much time during the film as I'm going to give it here. Despite that, though, I can't deny that I massively enjoyed Tron. They take the idea of a sci-fi fantasy set in a computer network and do so much with it. Even if not all of it works, it's amazing how visually interesting they manage to make a world that's mostly black, white, blue and red. 
And on top of that, they tell a simple yet smart story that not only contain pretty cutting edge details for the time, but don't even feel too ancient these days. But what do you think? I know I'm pretty late to the Tron party, but what did you think of the film? Do you agree with me? Do you think I'm wrong? Let me know in the comments below. And click the thumbs up or thumbs down if you like or don't like the video. Or if you fancy seeing more like this, I've put links to my reviews of Tomb Raider and Scott Pilgrim on screen. If you want to see future content by me, there's a big red juicy subscribe button that you should click. <laughs>